Hi there! Today we start a new series on the design and construction of a new instrument that very few people have in their own lab, but that can be very useful for analyzing the behavior of electronic components to be used in new projects. This device allows us to visualize on an oscilloscope those same curve characteristics that we normally see in the components data sheets and much more. These curves are normally used during the design to learn how to polarize a component, or when repairing a malfunctioning device, they can be used as a diagnostic tool to see if a component still works according to its specifications. In such case, most of the time it is possible to do so on the circuit itself without even removing the component from it. <laughs> and let's not even mention that it is very cool to show to your friends and family a device that is capable of drawing such beautiful images on an oscilloscope display. Let's begin! A curve tracer is basically a graphical instrument that plots a current versus voltage diagram for a given electronic component, like for example a transistor or a resistor or a capacitor. It is normally used in conjunction with an oscilloscope to visualize the characteristics of the component in a graphical format, like those used in the component datasheets. The instrument works by generating two variable voltages, one to polarize the device under test, or DUT, and one for the control terminal of the DUT, if there is one. The first voltage has a ramp shape, which provides an increasing polarization voltage to the device, while at the same time provides the sweep voltage for the x-axis of the oscilloscope. The second voltage has a ladder shape, applied directly to the control terminal of the component, like the base of a transistor or the gate of a JFET. The y-axis of the oscilloscope measures the current flowing through the DUT, thanks to the voltage drop through a resistance in series to the DUT itself. Thanks to the ladder voltage applied to the control pin, the curve tracer can show simultaneously multiple characteristics of the DUT for different values of the control voltage. Once we have the characteristics of the DUT, and we know the polarization resistor in series to it, we can easily extrapolate the various parameters of the device. This sort of measurements can be done on any discrete electronic component, either passive or active, and such measurements can be used for testing a component when in doubt if it works correctly or not or it can be used to measure precise parameters that can later be used to design a circuit around such component. So at the end we can trace curves of the current as a function of the voltage and for different values of the polarization. Such curves can be plotted by a simple oscilloscope capable of working in XY mode. All in all, it is a valuable tool for both diagnostics of malfunctioning circuits and for designing of new semiconductor-based devices. And it is also very useful to study and understand the behavior of electronic components in general. Let's look at some examples of diagrams that can be obtained using a curve tracer on different components. This one is the characteristic of a resistor, which is obviously a straight line at an angle, where the angle depends on the value of the resistance. This one instead is the typical characteristic of a diode. The current goes quickly up once the direct voltage exceeds the forward voltage of the diode, and the diode behaves as an open circuit for voltage values smaller than the forward voltage, or also for negative voltages. This one is a transistor, which gives us, instead, a whole family of characteristics based on the current flowing through its base. Here is the block diagram of the device we will build together. First thing on the left is a waveform generator. We will use that to generate the ramp necessary to polarize the component with increasing voltages, which will result in various currents across the component. This voltage and current are what we need to plot the IV characteristic of the component. The waveform generator will also create a ladder signal in voltage format that we can use to control the DUT. 
For example, we can use it to provide a voltage to the gate of EJ FET. Both signals, once generated, will go through another stage able to adjust the level of the signals, to adapt it to different kind of components that may require different levels of polarization voltages and control signals. After gone through the level adjustment, the lander signal goes also to a voltage to current converter. This way we can control also components that require a current rather than a voltage. One obvious example is a transistor, on which we can control the collector current by injecting a current in the base. Finally, the adjusted ramp will go through the DUT, and if necessary, the lander signal will go through the control pin of the DUT, either in the form of a current or a voltage, depending on the kind of component. The oscilloscope, although not visualized in this block diagram, we read on the x-axis the value of the ramp going into the DUT, and it will also read the current through the component on the y-axis. By the way, if you think you won't be able to use such a device because you don't have an oscilloscope and you cannot afford one, fear not. This device can be used with any low-cost oscilloscope as long as it has the XY capability. You can even go with one of those sold as a kit, the choice is yours. Professional curve tracers are very costly lab instruments, because they are difficult to build and are required to provide a high precision in the measurements. Our device, although not at the level of professional curve tracers, costing thousands of dollars, will still be able to satisfy the needs of a hobbyist lab. However, it still remains a complicated piece of equipment, so I will distribute its design and realization in a number of episodes in this series, making it easy for you to follow all the details of the project and get in return a beautiful instrument that you will be proud to have in your lab. Along the way, you will also have the opportunity to learn several new concepts of circuit design and construction. Also, once the device will be ready, I will use some more episodes to describe how to use it to obtain good results that make this device really useful. To avoid missing any episode of this series, make sure you have subscribed to this channel and have activated the notifications. You won't be disappointed. And while getting ready for the next episodes, I wish you all happy experiments.